make sure you tune into Dominion TV every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Download the app. You can get it on Roku and Apple and get ready for an awesome kingdom time. We're empowering young women and women to be the best that God has purposed them to be. Hey, y'all. Welcome to the Evolve with Shauna Marie show. I am absolutely elated and honored that you are joining us again tonight. Listen, every single Wednesday you're rocking with me and I thank you. I'm grateful. Thank you for your testimonies. Thank you for your prayer requests. Listen, I got to give my Shauna shout out. Shout out to my Evolve Dream Team who keeps me slayed and our sponsor, Linda Burgess of Lincoln Heritage. Whoop, whoop. So check it out, y'all. I got a very serious topic. And this is very near and dear to my heart um, just because it's a part of my testimony. So this month's series and theme is overcomer. So I want to talk to some overcomers tonight. I want to talk to some overcomers this month. And this series is called Back to Life. And I'm addressing the spirit of suicide. It's the thing that our community oftentimes tries to barely touch. The church doesn't want to touch it or sweeps it underneath the rug. But God wants to address it. During this pandemic, the nation's suicide rate reached historic heights. From people losing their jobs to people losing loved ones, the nation faced a grief and a loss, a sadness and a sorrow, even with the racism that the nation faced, the, the social injustice, the social unrest, it shook many of us to our core. The losses, the worry, the grief, the economic stress, the social isolation, the reduced access to church, and the anxiety almost pushed someone over the edge. So that's who I want to talk to tonight. I want to talk to the one who has wanted to give up. The one who has wanted to throw in the towel. The one that feels hopeless because your back is against the wall and you don't see any other way out. And if I could just share my testimony of how God allowed me to overcome the spirit of suicide, I believe that it will help you. I remember at the age of 10 years old, um, you know my story, I came from a, from a domestic violence background, so my, so my dad was extremely violent, um, and he literally was, like I said, uh, uh, daddy by day and monster by night because he drank. And I remember hearing my parents argue, right? They would argue about me. Or so I thought, because anybody puts anything in your head when, 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 when you're a kid and you're hearing your parents arguing, well, she did and she said and she did and she said. So I began to think that they were arguing about me. So in my mind, I said, well, since I'm the problem, then I'll remove myself from the equation. And I remember going into the bathroom, and I remember taking an entire bottle of aspirin. And it had to be Holy Spirit because something, which I now know was Holy Spirit, him, said, look at the back of the bottle, Shauna. And I went to the back of the bottle, and, and it had a poison control number. And I called it, and she said, how old are you? I said, I'm 10. 
and I took a whole bottle of pills. She said, like, the whole bottle? I took the whole bottle of pills. And she said to me, she said, I need you to call 911 right now and call your mommy. So I call my mom and I, and, and I, and I call 911. But I want to tell you something. See, here's the thing about a spirit. The door was open. And until you shut the door, that door is open. So what happens is, it's like at our house. You open the door and you leave it open and it's open until you close it. And because it's open, anything can come in. The bugs can come in. Uh, the robbers can come in. Let me pause right there because according to John 10 and 10, the enemy is the thief who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So that robber now had access to my door. And he continued to come in because I didn't know how to shut that door. So here he comes again when I'm in college. And he ain't really got a knock because the door is open. Here he comes again. I'm in college, mind battles. I'm driving. Drive off the bridge. Drive off. Your family don't love you. Drive off. The door is still open because I don't know how to close it. Here he come again at my door. I'm 30. I've had my son. I'm in the bathroom. And I'm telling you, it is a spirit. I, we're not dealing with flesh. It's a spirit. It can really overtake you if you're not rooted in God. So I'm sitting there with a razor blade in my hand. And I'm trying to cut my wrist. But I can't. Every time I attempt to slit my wrist, I can't. And I'm trying. I'm, something had like overtaken me. I was trying. And this happened. Mommy, I got to pee. That was my son. The Holy Spirit used my son to save my life that day. But the door still wasn't closed. So here he comes again. I'm in church, I'm saved, baptized, full of the Holy Ghost. And I hit a, I hit a low place where God's, I'm, I'm in a relationship and God says, this is not your husband and you got to leave and leave, every, leave everything. Don't take nothing. I had nothing. So, I, so I'm going through cycles in that relationship. I'm, I'm homeless. I'm broken, cycles of poverty, I'm losing buildings, I'm losing cars, I got eviction notices, I'm in a low place, oh my God. I have to go to sleep on my grandfather's couch. I can barely fend for my son. And I feel hopeless. And I go to this place every single day, and I sit there, and this is very important. I, I laid in this cradle position in this isolated spot, and I began to cry, and I began to tell myself, I can't do this anymore. And at that moment, my apostle, Ryan McJimsey, texted me. And, he, and, he, uh, and this was very powerful. It was very simple, but it was powerful because I was under pressure, and I didn't know how to relieve that pressure. And he said, unbearable pressure can only be, be relieved by God. And at that moment, I began to cry out to my daddy. God, help me. God, help me. Help me. And the love of God in that low place. So I'm telling you, the love of God in that low place came and snatched me, came and wrapped me, came and comforted me, came and rescued me. The love of God in that low place. So yes, you can be in church. Yes, you can be a worship leader. Yes, you can be the minister and pastor and experience that spirit because it's a spirit. I didn't know how to close the door. But Holy Spirit showed me how to pray. And I, I, I just want to listen. I want to ring the alarm to some prayer warriors, to some intercessors, to the body of Christ. We are the church. People need us. They feel hopeless. So if that is you, 
I am praying right now for you that God come and rescue you. That is what God says for you tonight. You might feel hopeless, like there's no outcome, like you want to get thrown a towel. We bind that up now in the name of Jesus. We command the angels to come and get you now, to come and snatch you off of ledges, snatch you off bridges, to, to stop that pill popping right now. Put that bottle down. Put that razor down. I command the guns to jam now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, for taking over my minds now, God. Oh, God, thank you for the mind of Christ. I fully armor you in the full armor of God. I declare a Psalm 91 covering over you right now. God is about to throw you a life jacket in your seat of trouble. He is about to give you mouth to mouth and resuscitate you and bring you back to life. But you got to make a choice. You got to make a choice. I had to decide that I wanted to live. I had to decide. And let me pause. Let me tell you what God said to me. He said, to reign with me, you have to suffer with me. Will you not suffer a little while? to live your best life. And there is nothing like knowing that you got a father that loves you, a father in heaven that, heaven that nothing can separate you from the love of him, that will come and he will rescue you and snatch you and teach you who he is, teach you his characteristics, teach you his ways, teach you his love, show you what grace and mercy is. There is nothing like knowing you have that kind of father. So if that resonated with you, it's coming from somebody that knows what you're going through, but there is hope after hurt. And there is life after disappointment. If that is you, I just want you to take a moment and surrender it all to God. You don't have to try to work it out. You don't have to try to fix it. God's going to fix it for you. Just surrender to God right there. You can't do this without him. Your life is on the line. You can't do this without him. So surrender your life to Christ right there. God, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of all of my unrighteous and unholy ways. But I believe that you died, that you arose, God, with all power in your hands just for me. Come into my heart. I receive you, Jesus. Amen. It's just that simple. If you said that prayer, if you gave God a yes, heaven is rejoicing. I am rejoicing with you. God loves you. God is going to rescue you. God is going to save, heal, and deliver you. All you got to do is trust him. Feel free to send us your prayer request at EvolveTalkShow.com so we can pray for you. We, we can help you walk through this journey. So I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Make sure you join us every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Don't forget to be the light and the salt. Shine, shine, sprinkle, sprinkle. <music>to email in your prayer requests and your testimonies. And if you want to partner with us, make sure you email us at evolvetalkshow.com.